welcome to part 2 of my 2019 iPhone leaks and rumor series. So in part 1 in the previous video, I covered everything we know so far in terms of the name, the design, the display, as well as the camera, so feel free to check out the previous video in case you missed that. And in part 2 in this one, I'll be covering all the remaining sections such as the specs, all the special features, the release date, the battery, as well as the price. And from here, I'll be making some quick update videos on everything new, but these two videos are the main videos on everything we know at the moment in terms of the 2019 iPhone, so get some snacks ready and here's everything we know so far. Okay, so starting off with the specs, the Apple A12 processor that's inside the 2018 iPhone XS, XS Max, as well as the iPhone XR, is just the monster. So performance-wise, it's not that far off from the top-of-the-line 15-inch MacBook Pro with the Intel 7920HQ processor i7 quad-core from last year. So yeah, it's quite incredible that Apple has managed to achieve this level of performance that Intel has achieved in a flagship laptop processor in 2017. So that's quite incredible. And then the iPad Pro third generation with the Apple A12X processor that just got announced and released like last week, that processor is even more insane. So the 2018 iPad Pro is even more powerful than the top of the line 15 inch MacBook Pro from last year. And then the Apple A13 processor, which would be included in the 2019 iPhones, that would be even more insane than the Apple A12X, which I mean, at the moment, you know, we have that much performance, but there's no way of actual using it because, you know, it's still iOS. So it's a very limited operating system. So maybe in iOS 13 and iOS 14, we will be able to use a bit more of that performance. But until then, you know, it's just sitting there untapped. Now, back in August, EE Times Taiwan reported that TSMC would remain the exclusive supplier for the Apple A13 chip in 2019, which they've actually been the exclusive supplier since 2016. Now, this is because TSMC's manufacturing seems to be way superior than both Samsung, Qualcomm, as well as Intel themselves, which is quite surprising and also unsurprising because if you if you take a look at Intel, Intel is still struggling to make the 10 nanometer process, which Apple has already made last year. Now the Apple A13 processor would be based on a 7 nanometer plus process, so it would be a more optimized version of the Apple A12 in terms of the architecture. The manufacturing of the Apple 13 is set to start in Q2 2019. And then back in June, Reuters reported that TSMC plans on investing $25 billion for the next 5 nanometer process, which would actually be completed in 2020. So yeah, long story short, yes, the new Apple A series processors are incredible in terms of the raw performance, but that's also thanks to TSMC. So, you know, Apple makes the designs, but then TSMC manufactures those designs. So without TSMC's manufacturing, Apple would not be able to achieve what they aim for at the moment. So yeah, props, props to both companies for achieving such a milestone, both in seven nanometers, as well as the upcoming five nanometers that they're already working on. So that was the CPU. Now in terms of the RAM, this would most likely remain the same at four gigabytes. So the iPhone 7 Plus was actually the first iPhone to come with three gigabytes of RAM, and Apple kept three gigabytes as the default with the iPhone 8 Plus uh, as well as the iPhone 10 last year until upgrading to 4 gigabytes in 2018 with the iPhone XS's. So for 2019 and possibly even 2020, 4 gigabytes would most likely remain the memory size on the iPhones, including the iPhone XR. So at the moment, the iPhone XR is the only new 2018 iPhone to come with 3 gigabytes instead of 4 gigabytes of RAM. So that would most likely be upgraded to 4 gigabytes in 2019. Okay, so, so far we know that the 2019 iPhones will look very similar to the 2018 ones. Ones. So we would still be getting the iPhone XR, the iPhone XS and the iPhone XS Max variants, you know, just with updated specs and updated name, a thinner bezel uh, all around the phone, as well as a smaller notch, as well as a triple lens camera, all of which I've actually covered in the first part of this video. Okay, so what special features would we be getting with the 2019 iPhones? Well, probably the biggest new feature would be the upgraded Face ID camera. And I'm not talking about the back facing camera because that one would be getting 3D depth sensing capabilities as well but the, the actual Face ID camera would be improved as well. So ming Quo reports that the 2019 iPhones would actually feature a brand new flood illuminator that would lower the amount of random infrared light from the environment and therefore make Face ID faster and also more accurate. And you know, on the iPhone XS, Face ID is already faster than on the iPhone 10 thanks to the Apple A12 processor. So combine that, combine the Apple A13 with the new hardware and Face ID could pretty much be instant on the 2019 iPhones. And then there's also a brand new time of flight or TOF 3D depth sensing camera that Apple's actually working on. Apparently this would have multiple lasers that would shoot infrared light into the scene, again similar to the Face ID camera, and you could scan an object in 3D by just rotating your iPhone or your iPad around the object and then you can see that object and you know edit it in 3D on your phone or tablet. So that's pretty cool, but it is reported to come only to the iPad in 2019, the iPad Pros, and not with the 2019 iPhones. 
Now, aside from this, uh, the other big change could be a brand new USB Type-C port. So Apple has actually migrated finally uh, to USB Type-C on the iPad this year with the iPad Pro 2018, making this the first iOS device to come with USB Type-C. And this, guys, is a huge, huge upgrade. So now uh, you can not only connect 4K monitors to USB Type-C port, which at the moment, by the way, is it's kind of pointless because all it does is mirror the internal display, but you can indeed connect USB Type-C docks, power banks, microphones, speakers, and, and so on. Plus, you can directly connect the new iPad to the MacBook Pros, which you cannot do with the iPhones at the moment. So yeah, USB Type-C is most likely coming in 2019s. I mean, it you know should have come back in 2015 when Apple first switched to USB Type-C with a 12-inch MacBook, but oh well, you know, it's Apple, so they're always late to the party. Now, we've also had reports that Apple would be adding Apple Pencil support to their new iPhones, which could make sense if you have, you know, both an iPad Pro as well as the new iPhones. But at the same time, the iPhone would not have a magnetic pencil connector like the iPad Pro, so unless Apple designs an iPhone with a built-in pencil, pretty much like the Samsung Galaxy Note lineup, well, I really don't see this happening. I mean, this would be nice for people who already have an Apple Pencil, but no one would buy an Apple Pencil just to use it with an iPhone, unless one, either Apple builds one into the actual phone, or two, Apple designs a separate Apple Pencil, maybe a smaller version of the Apple Pencil designed for just the iPhone. Okay, next up, 3D Touch might, might just be removed, which is a bit strange, but this is based on a report coming from Barclays that they did in August 2018, and they claimed that yes, Apple would be removing 3D Touch in the 2019 iPhones in order to reduce the manufacturing cost, reduce the cost and to make the devices thinner. And I can definitely say that I do see how this could happen. So Apple, for example, didn't include 3D Touch with this year's iPhone XR. Instead, you actually hold on an icon or something and Taptic Engine would actually vibrate to simulate 3D Touch. So you're basically lacking the pressure sensitivity of the iPhone XS. And then if you take a look at the iPads, the iPads still do not have 3D Touch at all. So yeah, it seems like Apple's not really that invested into 3D Touch. Also, the implementation in iOS is quite bad, as it's not that easy to tell which apps do support 3D Touch and which ones do not. But honestly, I really do hate how it feels. So you have to hold significantly longer, and then the haptic feedback is just horrible. It's really, really bad. It's much worse than the home button haptic feedback on the Galaxy S8 and newer, which I've always disliked. So yeah, if Apple does indeed remove the pressure sensitivity from the 3D Touch, well, at least they can simulate the haptic feedback the same way that they, they're currently doing on the iPhone XS and the iPhone XS Max. At least that's what that they should be doing. Other than that, 5G has been rumored to come in 2019, but then a new report coming from Fast Company claims that Apple would be releasing their first 5G phone, the 5G iPhone in 2020, instead of the 2019 release. So according to this new report, Apple would be using Intel's 8161 5G modem uh, that would be manufactured using a 10 nanometer process, while the 8160 is currently just used for 5G testing and prototyping. So this is the modem that I was telling you in one of my previous Xamarin's episodes that Apple would be using in 2019 in the iPhones. But yeah, it seems like Apple's only using this for prototyping and testing internally. So yeah, looks like Apple's playing safe when it comes to 5G. Mostly, you know, just observing the market to see how the public responds to the first 5G Android phones, which by the way would be coming in 2019, possibly even starting with the Galaxy S10 in around February. Water resistance is set to remain the same as in the 2019 iPhones, according to a report from Inchi Kuo. But yeah, other than that, we don't really expect any new features coming in 2019 for the iPhones, at least not as of right now. Now, in terms of the release date, pretty much the same as always, we're gonna have a September 2019 for the, for the unveil. Uh, on a Friday of the event week, we would be getting the pre-orders, and then a week after, you would be getting the actual devices, you know, delivered. Now, the only difference from last year is that the iPhone XR or the iPhone 11 R would be released alongside the other two models, the iPhone 11 S, the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Max. Jesus, those names. Apple, please fix those names. Okay, so what about the battery? Well, unfortunately, we do not have any new, you know, cool advancements in the battery technology, such as graphene batteries. Those are coming in a few years. So yeah, up until then, the only improvements that we can do is increasing the battery size and making the processor more efficient, which is what Apple's doing next year. So since Apple's removing 3D Touch, most likely from the iPhone 11 and 11s, uh, 11 Max, the batteries could be getting larger. And then since the Apple A13 processor is also based on a seven nanometer plus process, so a bit more optimized than the Apple A12, it would be a bit more power efficient, a tiny bit. So you could expect about 30 minutes or so, or 15 or so minutes in terms of the battery life on the 2019 iPhones when compared to the 2018 ones. And finally, the price. So how much are these new iPhones going to be? Well, take a guess, leave a comment. No, really, realistically, do you leave a comment, but realistically, ever since Tim Cook 
uh, you know, took over Apple, the prices have increased year after year. So the iPhone 10 was the most expensive phone ever at $1,000 and way more than that, by the way, outside the US. And now the 2018 iPhones are even more than that. So even though Apple has decreased the manufacturing cost by, you know, removing the headphone jack adapter, as well as keeping most of the iPhone XS components the same as the iPhone 10, such as, you know, the display, the Face ID camera, among many more, the prices have not been decreased. So Apple would most likely increase the prices even more next year, regardless of whether or not Apple does end up removing uh, 3D Touch. I mean, take a look at the iPad Pro, the new iPad Pro 2018. You can now buy a tablet that costs 2,200 pounds, which is ridiculous. Yes, the new iPad Pro is still a tablet that's uncomparable to even a 12-inch MacBook in terms of functionality and usability. So yeah, don't expect the prices to get any lower in 2019. In the best case scenario, they would remain the exact same. But yeah, let me know in the comments what do you guys think about these new 2019 iPhones. Do you think the upgrade would be worth it over something like a 10s, 10s Max, or 10R, or not? And definitely subscribe to notifications if you want to see more Leaks and Rumors episodes like this one. I've done quite a few interesting episodes before. Uh, so yeah, check out the channel for previous Leaks and Rumors episodes. Do hit that bell icon if you want to get notified as soon as a brand new video comes out. And also follow on Instagram for more behind the scenes shots. I'm actually redoing the whole Instagram page. I've actually redone it. So yeah, cool behind the scenes shots on Instagram at Zone of Tech. And also you can become a member by joining the Zone Supported channel and you get access to some pretty cool to the features such as priority comments and live streams. The next live stream is next week actually, by the way, last Saturday of every month. But yeah, thank you for watching. I'm Daniel. Give this a like if you enjoyed it to let me know. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in my next video. So that's the next signing out. Cheers.